You have said in multiple interviews and you said my ultimate goal is the Olympic medal. Not oh. necessarily. Okay. If we can create a world champion, that's better than an Olympic medal. I always felt Anusha could beat Mary Cole. For you to give me a check for boxing, my credibility must be 200%. Today, would you want to give a check to any sports federation not knowing where it's going to be spent? It's combat sports is a tough man's sport and at some point there is fighting outside of the ring. Of course. Were there like moments where you were intimidated? No, they would they would try to intimidate, but they knew I was actually bigger than the minister. The moment if you suspend me like that, the IBA will blacklist Sri Lanka. That is what would happen. The moment you put an interim committee, they will suspend the country. Like what happened to Sri Lanka cricket? Yes. If you think about it. Yeah. So the maid at home also have an opinion on Sri Lanka cricket. The driver, the everybody. Everybody. Everybody has an opinion. But most of the people don't have an opinion on boxing because they don't know the game intricately. Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. What do you think about it? Every sport is money. Now what social media and all that does is create brands. Say the KFL, IBA, WBC. Now that is how that brand which will create the hype. Because without spectators, there is no sport. Can Sri Lanka play Manchester United? Or can we play Raga at a World Cup? But the sports that we can easily win is pistol shooting. Because that sport is a technical sport. That's a reality. Actually, thank you so much for coming. Yes. Mr. Gomez, I yes. just wanted to know, you know, ever since I was a kid, I was fascinated about martial arts. Yes. And this industry as a whole. Yes. And, you know, when I look at boxing, yes. I see Bob Barham, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, yes. even though he's a bit controversial, and Eddie Hearn, yeah. credible boxing promoters. You know, I'm not saying you are the next Sri Lankan Dana White or anything. You yes. are, you, you are, yes. Dan Gomez. I can draw certain parallels from them and you know what they did managing their boxes yes. and bringing someone up like Anthony Joshua or some people like that yeah. when they come to the top it, the managing the fighters when you when you it's I can't tell that you did exactly what they did yes. but it's very similar to what they do yes. and in your own this Sri Lankan way what you did what you did yes. for Sri Lankan boxing and you know I just want to talk to you about boxing first of all yes right? Who are your favorite boxers? If you had a Mount Rushmore yeah. of goats, who would it be? Definitely my, is it been now recorded? Yeah. Yeah, recorded. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my favorite boxer undoubtedly is Muhammad Ali. I mean, he's, he's the greatest boxer ever, I would say. Uh, and in his prime time, he lost about four years because he was in jail. Uh, and unfairly treated by the U.S. Yeah. at that time. His yeah. uh, uh, outspoken behavior against uh, the U.S. military that he wouldn't fi want to fight uh, in Vietnam, put him in, put, they put him in jail. So... Um, he said, <laughs> he said, uh, what did those Chinese people ever do to me? <laughs> yes, <laughs> something, something like that. Like that. Yeah. The Viet Cong. Yeah. So yeah. I think undoubtedly he is the best. Although he lost Ali. four years of his uh, prime uh, time, prime career yeah. at that time. Yeah. And I would say there were great boxers like, uh, you know, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, mm. then yeah. Yeah. Mike Tyson. Tyson. Different styles, different things, but uh, Marvin Hagler. Mm. So all these guys were really great. You, know, you have to understand people like Ali and Fraser, and especially Fraser as well. Yeah. Four to 15, 15 rounds, 3 minute 15 rounds, which is 45 minutes of fighting. Yeah. And in an in a era when there was no steroids, no, you know, uh, no, that kind of a, uh, yeah. stuff. The sport was not and, at that level. And, and the amount of energy, the power and, uh, you know, it's amazing. I mean, when I, when I have seen a lot of professional fights as well in my life, and to go 15 rounds, you know, 3 minutes, 15 rounds, I mean, virtually, you know, no wonder they got paid, you know, millions of dollars. Yeah. But even with that, it's a, it's a tough, it's a tougher sport in the world. Mm. So, it's very tough. It's interesting that you put uh, Marvin Fraser. Yeah. That's, 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 that's pretty good. My top five would be Julio Cesar Chavez. Yes. Ali. Yes. Lennox. And uh, Floyd Mayweather. Yes. And uh, 
Arthur better behave or yes. Dimitri Bivo, depending on how that outcome of that fight would have gone, but yes. got postponed. And so you, do you remember Rumble in the Jungle? Of course, you of know? course. Yeah, I've been to Kinshasa as well. Oh, and, uh, you know, I was there in Congo about six months back. And they had a tournament in the same place. Okay. You know, so it brought, uh, I mean, I've seen Ali's fight only on video. Okay. But it brought good memories of uh, <laughs> where, the, where the fight took place yeah. in Congo. We had a board meeting there and they had some exhibition fights uh, in Congo. Who are your like favourite boxers in this era? Especially after, you know, guys like Floyd Mayweather. I think... Uh, uh, I would say uh, Jones, Jones Jr. Okay. Right, Roy he's Jr. a great boxer. Okay. Uh, Mayweather is good, but he's a great defensive fighter. Hmm. You then, don't like that? You know, Pacquiao, okay. right? You know, there are some good, great boxers, hmm. and of course, uh, you know, I've seen Joshua, I've seen uh, uh, who Amir Khan. Yeah, they're all good boxers in different ways. Hmm. But uh, I think when you want to pitch them up with the greats of all time, yeah. uh, nobody to still fight uh, people like Ali in his prime, you know, or Joe, Joe Fraser. The technique, the stamina, the power, uh, everything mm. when you take as a boxer. Mm. You know, it's not only power, it's uh, about, you know, tactics. You're a smart boxer as well. Mm. So, I mean... Okay, obviously, I don't blame you yes. because you are much older than me and uh, you obviously, uh, you know, you prefer the old school boxers. Yes. But, you know, as someone, I'm 26 years old and yes. I look at guys like Dimitri Bivol, yes. Canelo Alvarez, yes. Pacquiao Floyd yes. and uh, Arthur Better Behev really struck me as a champion because he's the only boxing champion in this era who has a 100% knockout ratio, a finish ratio. Yes. So, would you, you know, knockout you knockout rate is not the not the criteria I would judge a boxer. It's about hmm. you know whom he fights, what is the other opponents in his time, uh, the techniques, yeah. uh, the power. Every, everything counts. It's hmm. not only one aspect that uh, you would decide whether he's a great boxer or not. You know his profile. You know the people because Ali fought the best at. You know, in his time, and you know he, yeah. you know, bringing Ali again, yeah, you because know. you know three times, you know, and even in his forties he mm. became the world champion, and he fought people like Joe Fraser. Yeah. I would have loved to see him fight somebody like Mike Tyson. Yeah. You know, that would have been a great fight, but uh, didn't happen at the end. Yeah, but they had, you know, the whole combination of uh, Ali's team or or Sugar Ray Leonard's uh, team. Mm. They had uh, Angelo Dundee as the corner man. They had, you know, super, super coaches, super trainers. Mm -hmm. And so the whole combination of everything was really great. Yeah, I mean, Ali's life is like a movie. Yeah. If, if that moment where he says, what's my name? What's my name? And then he yes. just, that, that, that style of unorthodox boxing, yes. not, tra not the traditional style, yes. his hands down approach. Yes. He's, and to, to do that at that time, in the 50s, in the 40s, 40s, like it, to bring that in, that was very revolutionary. And Mr. Gomez, I'd argue that he is the reason why there is a UFC right now, why there is modern boxing, why there is a one championship or whatever. It's just that he brought in, that he took the sport to a next level, to a level where it's industrious. You know what I mean? It's like an industry. That's true, but you know, you have to also understand uh, there was no social media at that time. I mean, there was no hype. But Ali's face was the most known face all over the world. Mm. From China to Saudi Arabia to anywhere in the world, he, his face was the most known face in the world. You know, I mean, today, you know, if Ali was fighting in his prime with social media and all the marketing, I mean, it'll be, it'll be you know, a fight in Madison Square. You know, you can, you know, I've seen those stadiums. And even that time, 100,000 people, you know, and, and, and the kind of price money, mm. still, you know, enormous. So, boxing has kind of completely changed because yeah. if you just, if I 
if I had to spend few time, few minutes on Actually, this. Actually, I was going to get to that. Because uh, generally, all the professional fighting starts with amateur fighting. They, they go through the major boxing events and eventually the Olympics. And they, when they get a gold medal or a silver medal or a medal at the Olympic Games, the promoters will pick uh, the professionals okay. and then they put them on a professional path. Mm. But with the new boxing administration uh, led by Uma Kremlin, mm. which is the Russian guy, he's a Russian billionaire, mm. he's kind of giving prize money even uh, at the amateur level. So any amateur guy who fights less than 25 professional fights is still eligible to fight at the Olympic Games. And today he made an announcement that all the medalists at the Olympic Games would be paid, you know, millions of dollars by the International Boxing Association. Right. That will change the complete uh, face of boxing because now you have, boxing will become what I would say like the FIFA, the international football. Yeah. You know, FIFA is bigger than Olympics. You know, they'll be very independent yeah. and the world will have one body, International Boxing Association. Yeah. They'll live a conflict with the International Boxing Association, uh, trying to get their independence with the IOC. Yeah. But eventually, money talks. That's the reality of things. Yeah. So a boxer who gets half a million dollars for a gold medal or a half a middle, half a million do million dollars for a uh, world title, you know, is not going to be motivated by anything else. You fight at the Olympics, fine, but IBA will own all the professional boxing. So all these other what you call boxing associations in the professional world will eventually die because what will happen is if the, the pipeline from the amateur boxing from the Olympics will go in and fight at the IBA meets, oh, okay. which is now happening even today. They have fight nights in every continent. Mm. And they will next year most probably have a World Cup. Mm. So the continents will fight for the World Cup. Okay, okay. So it's going to be a different phase of boxing and this we will see. different from what Saudi is doing. Saudi is handling the pro fights. But what yes. we're talking about is the amateur, the structure of going from amateur to the Olympics and potentially to a global body like the FIFA. Yes, yes. that's going to happen. I would say it would, it would happen yes. most probably before the next Olympics. Okay. So, they'll okay. fight at the Olympics, but right. it'll be kind of, it's like football. Yeah. I mean, they play mm. at the Olympics, mm. but it's like the yeah, World Cup. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. Cricket is the same. Yeah. The ICC will control the game, but they will play at the next Olympics. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I wanted to just talk to you about that also. I was going to talk to you about this after, like in the middle of the interview. But uh, what is it? You are the uh, executive uh, committee. You are the executive committee member. Of, uh, I'm a I, director of International yeah. Boxing and the Asian Boxing Association. So what does your role entail? My role, there are five uh, men and five women yeah. plus five continental directors in world boxing. Okay. That's the body for 200 countries. Like there are only few sports like football, which is number one, boxing, volleyball, and athletics. Okay. There are 200 countries take part, all 200 countries. So the 200 countries will elect, you know, five men, five women and five continental chairmen from the whole world. Mm. Now Asia is represented by three people. Mm -hmm which is Mr. Pichai, who is actually now the Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand, Mr. Zhu, who is the Deputy Sports Minister of China, and myself. Okay. And there is uh, General Yusuf from Qatar, who is also serving uh, the IBA board. Yeah. So we are from Asia. Like that, you have five men and five women uh, representatives managing the board. Yeah. Our whole job is to bring transparency, structure uh, and financial, you know, transparency in the first place mm. and to see how globally that International Boxing Association can help the countries so that we have major events in most of the continents. Last year was Asia and Asia comes as the strongest boxing 
nation in the world now with Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan and women's boxing India. So there is a lot of emphasis uh, for Asia last year. Now this is going to be year of Americas. Mm. So the whole focus of global strategy, having the meets, funding the smaller nations, financial assistance for smaller countries, yeah. you know, and, and structuring the coaching, structuring the referees and judges, having the exams, yeah. all done by the board. And of course, there's a huge administrative team and a chief executive, which is uh, uh, British uh, former major, Chris. Uh, so Chris Handel's been the CEO and the secretary general. Mm -hmm. So he drives the structure of the organization. Okay. So he's got uh, people for boxing development, mm -hmm. boxing coaching, mm -hmm. referees and judges commission, mm -hmm. all very senior people who's been involved in boxing and who's very transparent and who's very with high integrity. Okay. So, Mr. Gomez, like right now, there yes. are young people who is who are very fascinated by combat sports and boxing in general. They want to start up young business, like up and coming startups as in fight leagues. Yes. What is the possibility of those up and coming fight leagues, boxing leagues, to get, probably get sanctioned by IBA? What, what's the process that they have to do? Would you be willing to work with them? No, everybody say as long as they are playing with the IBA rules, okay. which is also governed by using IBA referees and judges mm. and enough precautions like having the ambulance, mm. having the IBA medical doctors who are qualified, uh, they can, anybody can have a meet. Mm. So it will be in collaboration with say, if it is Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka Boxing Association, okay. Okay. whose parent body is the International Boxing Association. So as long as it conforms to all the rules and regulations of international boxing, you can have the fight leagues. Mm. Now, fight leagues will eventually lead to, in I'm giving a simple examples like the IPL cricket. Now, IPL cricket is governed by again the ICC. It's like any any league will be governed by the local federation and okay. governed by the uh, governed by the. Uh, International Boxing Association. But govern means, yeah. right, they will be observers. Okay. They won't get involved in day to day administrations. Tomorrow you have a fight league and you want to have it uh, a big tournament in Sri Lanka, but you will have to ask for IBA qualified referees and judges, mm. and you need to have basic conformity of the uh, the health and safety, that is, having the ambulance, okay. having a ringside doctor, etc. Okay. You can run the meet okay. as it is. Okay. Whether you give the price money, not giving the price money and all that is no issue at all. Earlier we couldn't give price money, now you can give price money mm. uh, in both amateur and professional meets. Now what happens is we also encourage the professional type of boxing here because eventually there will be leagues like initially I'm looking at cricket which is more popular in Sri Lanka yeah. like the IPL and now LPL. So. India, all these countries will have also have fight leagues. Mm. And once the talent is identified and for something like the World Cup, okay. you know, people will get an opportunity to fight. So Asia will have maybe two or three teams. Okay. And if a Sri Lankan is good, which is generally they are pretty good in the smaller weights, we might have a very good chance of boxing in that pro level. Okay, so that is in a pro level. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, okay. in a pro level. pro level. So it will be minimum of five rounds to eight rounds. And that will help build their records. Yes. And, you know, potentially. So this is the I want to ask you. Now, are you with this kind of attitude? Are you, I remember I, you have said in multiple interviews and, you know, talking to journalists, you've said, uh, my ultimate goal is the Olympic medal. Not now, necessarily. Okay. If we can create a world champion, that's better than an Olympic medal. Okay. So are you. Okay, that's good that you are adapting to this. Because new... actually IBA has personally told me okay. to set up the IBA professional model and to head it. But for me, it was too early because we have to get the amateur structure right to go on to the professional level because we don't have boxers of that stature who can fight the five to eight rounds, mm. you know. Mm. So we need to structure it. And I would say within the next four to five years, we'll have a couple of good pros. Say, for example, I'll give you a simple example. Tivankar Anasinga. Yeah. Tivankar Anasinga 
won the last, you know, he's one of the medalists at the 2018 uh, uh, Commonwealth Common Games, Games in, in Brisbane, mm. in Gold Coast. Mm. Now, Tivanka fought this boy from Uzbekistan, mm. Hassan boy, Dustimov, yeah. I think, is if I pronounce it right, but definitely Hassan boy. Now, Hassan boy got the gold at the uh, at the Olympics in Rio. He became the Asian champion. And today, he's the new flyweight, light flyweight world champion. Mm. Now, if I were to, if Tibanka Ranasinghe continued, most probably today, Tibanka Ranasinghe could have fought Five rounds or eight rounds with Hassan Boy. Mm. Because Tiwanka was very good. But the government is not supporting. And it's not private sponsorship. And companies and individually people sponsoring. And this is big money. I mean, if I had all the financial support in the world or from any other sponsors, if you had something like cricket, mm. I would have sent, uh, you know, Tiwanka Rana Singha to... Uzbekistan or Kazakhstan or Cuba. Mm. Because yeah, we have, have the, the talent. We are, they are the best boxers. What do you think about that? Do you think a Sri Lankan fighter, up and coming, good guy, is it a necessary, is it a must for he or she to train abroad in of countries course. like Russia, Uzbekistan, Cuba? Of course. Okay. Because two things. Why is their training so different? Two things. Any coach in any of these countries, say Cuba, they have a doctorate in sports science, doctorate, PhD. My coach, who was a Cuban coach, who took and helped uh, Anrudha Ratnayaka to go for Olympics, mm. have a PhD in sports science. Mm. Now, we have only one guy, a good boxer, who's been trained in Cuba, yeah. Ladisha Kahatapitiya, who's now also been trained by IBA. Mm. You know, he's completing his PhD in sports science. So, it's a six to seven year course. So, once they understand that. Now, say for example, each country which I've studied yeah. have three different methods of doing it. One is identifying the talent very young. Cuba identifies the talent very young. Very young. Say 10 years, 12 years. Yeah. People with longer reach, orthodox boxers, South Power boxers, they pick them very young. Yeah. Then they have the school meets. Then they have the zonal meets or their provincial meets. Yeah like how we play cricket. Mm. It's like the same kind of structure mm. which Sri Lanka cricket has. It's just it's the bigger sport. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, the, yeah. because it's a bigger sport yeah. and it, it's got money. So, they could go through the same process. Then, they have for each, I've gone and seen their national side and the national training center, high performance center. You know, their training is very tough mm. and they have about three or four coaches for each boxer at that level say the national level who are the Olympic boxers. Mm. So, they don't have money, they have the talent, they have the process and they have the meritocracy. So, that is why Cuba has won mm. the largest, highest number of boxing gold medals at the Olympics in the last 50 years. Mm. And they have surpassed every country. The second thing is, I have seen the Hungarian and the French national teams, how they practice. Now, they have more technology. You know, France has technology. So, there are centers, there are three coaches and every time a boxer, boxer fights, right, they evaluate, they score the number of punches because now it's all technology. It's not fighting like Tyson. Mm. It's all techniques, strategy. And Younger boxers, I mean, the 90s boxers had the heart, but yeah. younger boxers are very technical. Technical. Yeah. So, they train from that, say, a Uzbek guy or Kazakh guy. They have been trained and they have got the A team, B team, C team and the youth team. Now, say for, a, for example, say 15 years ago, we had a duel with Sri Lanka versus India and we won the duel. Mm. Today, I am telling you, if we had 13 weights duel of both men and women against India, we won't win a single medal. We will get defeated in all 26 fights. That is the leap that India had, had made. Today, the Indian team will qualify at least more than five boxers in the men's seven division, seven uh, uh, weights, mm. and at least four weights in the women's division minimum. Mm. Okay, this mm. is a final trial in Thailand today, mm. and that's the standard they have. Why? 
like the IPL, they have put money. The government has supported because it's a sport that India can win. They have 1 billion people. Politics are minimum. Mm. So they have picked the talent and their A team will practice in Uzbekistan. Mm. B team will be in Kazakhstan and the C team will be in Cuba. Mm. And the women's team. And they have all foreign coaches and, and the Indian coaches as well. Always the head coach has been a foreign coach. Mm. Now you ask me the question, why, you know, we need to have foreign coaches. Foreign coaches are more transparent. <laughs> Number one. You know, it is not my boy, my school, and, uh, you know, Pahatarata and Udarata and Army and Air Force and MAs and all that. They don't have all that. They want performance. And if you want to drive a federation to make Olympic athletes, it must, you must be transparent first. The biggest problem in Sri Lanka, they are biased. Starting from school to nationality to caste to 100 variables, mm. they are judging a boxer or an athlete, you know, by those criteria, not the best man to represent the country. I have a major problem. I've been the president of boxing for 23 years. That's one of my major problems. Transparency in boxing. In but, but would you say, like, as a percentage, how many of Sri Lanka's coaches are good as a percentage? I would say we have got some fairly good coaches. We I have. Mean, yeah. We have. I mean, people like Harsha Kumar, who is our national coach, he's a, he's a SAF gold medalist. Yeah. He's uh, been at the corner, uh, you know, with... Uh, you know, at Commonwealth Games and even now at the trial in very technically uh, experienced guy. So it all against a team. You see, you can have the best coach, right? Now, I used to in my, in my younger days and for a long time, used to think Angelo Dundee was the coach. Angelo Dundee was no coach. Bandini Brown was the coach. Angelo Dundee was the corner man. And Ali said one thing. Ali said, I changed my name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. Yeah. I changed my religion from Christianity to being a Muslim. I changed my wife and divorced my wife. But whenever I fight, you know, Angelo Dundee is at the corner, is my mm. corner man. Mm. Because Angelo Dundee was not black. He was half Italian. Mm. So they want to drop him off. Ali said, no. Angelo Dundee was the greatest motivator. So when we used to fight, I'm now gone for Maybe five Commonwealth Games, yeah. four Asian Games, five World Championships, Olympics. My role was the corner man. My job was to take the gum shield, wash the spit, put it back, give the guy water, stop his blood mm. and to motivate him. The head coach was Harsha Kumara mm. or Vasanta or Amila. They took different roles. So we have a three-member team who will do different things. Tactics, technique and you have to fight five countries. Mm. So the coaches must adopt change. You know, I have major conflicts with even the coaching because people think, oh, he's my boy when he was a school boy. So I need to go on this trip. The whole idea is to go on a trip, which I won't allow. So I become very unpopular. I become, they would say, a dictator. Yeah, I've heard. But you must look at the best interest of my country. We don't want to waste time. You, if you are going for a fight, would you want to go with a mediocre guy because he was your school coach? No. As the president of Sri Lanka Boxing, mm -hmm. I knew to give you the best coach mm -hmm. so that you have a better chance of winning. Mm -hmm. If yeah. people don't understand that, mm -hmm. we have lost the game before we even get into the ring. That's a sad state of this country. Uh, not to divert away from the topic, but you mentioned India versus Sri Lanka. Yes. You know, one thing that was very sad for me when I look back at it also was the fight between Mericom and Anusha Koditoakko. Yes. In the Commonwealth Games. That was a one-sided beating. Yes. My God, that was very hard to look at. And I can hear Anusha's cornerman uh, and coaches. I, I, I can, what I, happened there? You know, I, I can tell you this. Okay. Anusha Koditoakko was a very, very good boxer. Okay. She is I mean, she, she's three times, uh, you know, she has lost to Mary Com. Mm. Now, at one point she challenged Mary Com. You know, the, the reason is she had a better chance before this Commonwealth Games and the SAF Games. You know, she injured uh, the uh, leg. Mm. 
Now, I've been at Anusha's corner from when she started boxing to the Commonwealth medal. Now, Anusha has still some technical flaws, which I tried to correct. And unfortunately, the coaches couldn't correct. Anusha is very, uh, very difficult woman also to handle. Now, when you look at Mary Com, Mary Com came from a very different background and very tough background and she was mentally very strong to win and the whole country was kind of supporting uh, you know Mary Com when she became the first world champion for India actually Mary Com changed the the eyes of Indian boxing you know she changed the whole world you know women's boxing from Asia and she was a feminist icon yeah so she was undoubtedly good now, not to take anything away from Anusha. Now, say for Anusha example, really when Anusha fought, yeah. and uh, I told Anusha, Mary Com was in past the prime. This is the last meet, mm -hmm. and she was going down. Anusha was also past the prime, okay. but Anusha had an advantage there. I always felt Anusha could beat Mary Com. I had the confidence when I got into the ring. Mm -hmm. But Anusha was psychologically not ready to accept that challenge. You know what she said, you know, when I when I had a conversation with me subsequently, you know, why she didn't, you know, go in there and hit some of the blows. Mm. She said, Sir Kiai, a parval galladi parval, but a badunama khanintamai taruyanni. So the punches are very hard, no two words about it. Yeah. But you see, when you get into the ring, it's a combination of people, psychology, a lot of things, you mm. know, if you're it's like a gladiator. Mm. There are good days, the bad days. Mm. But I would say Mary Com is a better boxer. Yeah. But today, if Mary Com were to fight the national Indian champion, you know, she would lose she would because lose. India has also moved on. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, you know, you need continuous, you know, support, continuous training, continuous training overseas. Because also, I need to tell you what Sri Lankans don't know. Because to win a gold medal, you have to have five fights or maybe seven fights. Mm. Okay, to win a gold medal. And seven fights will be from different countries. African would fight very differently. Uh, Australian would fight very differently. Uh, Uzbek would fight differently. Uh, Russian would fight very differently. So you need to have, it's like playing cricket initially in 1996, where we got thrashed in Australia. Those wickets we were not used to. Yeah. But Arjuna was a great captain, you know, with mental agility and strength, great captain, yeah. you know, might not be the best administrator, but great captain, yeah. right, who kept that team together. So it's a long process. I have fought in more than, I would say, 27 countries to qualify under the Ratnayaka. 27 countries, I put my job at stake, being the chief executive for MAS Intimates yeah. and uh, screaming and shouting from the family. <laughs> With every holiday, I used to go there. We fought in Tunisia, we fought in Paris, we fought in Australia. Yeah, I remember Anuruddha's knockout of the Tanzanian yeah, Tanzania, everywhere we went. That's crazy. And he was ready. And when he qualified at the World Championships, mm. one year before the Olympic Games as a qualifier, mm. he was number five ranked in the world. Really? He was number five ranked in the world. He was very well re ready for it. Yeah, he was very but it's a pressure at Olympics. Mm. It's a pressure. You know, you have to train all these people. Why do we lose in cricket? We got the talent, you know, but you need to spend time, you know, with them, you know, mentally getting their mental resilience. Now a foreign country comes, Russia or any of the major boxing countries, they have their team, they have three coaches, senior coach, which might be from another country, their national coach mm. plus the corner man, mm. you know, who's who can handle situation. Mm. It's a different role. Mm. Then you have a doctor, mm. you have a masseur, mm. right? And you have a psychologist, okay? Only Sri Lanka cricket can today afford that. None of the other sports. How do we go? Boxing. We have one manager and, and a manager as well. Yeah. So we have one manager, cum coach, cum corner man to everything. Like a kokata thaile. So we need to we need to understand the game to do that. 
you know, where friends of the friends of the National Olympic Committee, relatives of the National Olympic Committee and the rest of the people all will be at the games without the team, you know, not having enough athletes. I, know imagine, that. I imagine that must have been the situation like 20 years ago, right? Even today. Today it's worse. At the Commonwealth Games in Brisbane, we were given only two, two opportunities. I was sick actually that time. My doctor advised me not to go. But that was my last chance to get the medal through. I gave my ticket to Amila Ravinda, who is the second coach. Harsha was the top coach. We had a six-member team. Six-member team. And we would send a six-member team instead of a nine-member team. Or because Commonwealth Games, there are only about three or four sports mm. which can win medals. Mm. That is rifle shooting, boxing, weightlifting, mm. or maybe badminton. Right? We have no chance of winning a Commonwealth medal in Raga. Mm. Because we get Raga scores. We get cricket scores in a Raga match. You know, we play England, Australia, <laughs> New Zealand. New Zealand backs us about you know, 80 zero, mm. you know, and we send mm. and all the guys are there, their coaches, they send the big teams, mm. boxing, weightlifting will be less. And some of the guys who are coming, not even at the games, they are in Melbourne, you know, having a good time. The games are in Brisbane. I spend my own money, own ticket, business class ticket to Australia, stayed outside the stadium so that I could get another coach in. And we managed to bring three medals. Mm. That's a reality. So people don't know reality. They watch, they, they criticize a lot of things. Now, boxing is the toughest sport in the world. 200 countries box. Mm. You know, for us to qualify at the Olympic trial, there are three trials. You know, first at the World Championships, mm. one year before, 135 countries take part. And the second trial, you know, two trials in Asia. Mm. Now, here this time, there's a third trial, which mm. is for the whole world. We have got Two boxers fighting. There's one fight today. Mm. Uh, Mihiran, he's already won the first fight. He got the second fight against Morocco. Touch and go. But I'm not looking at the qualifier, giving him the experience, giving him the mental resilience so that I can train him for the Commonwealth Games. Mm. Forward thinking. Mm. My term is over. I'm no longer the president of Sri Lanka boxing today, but I'm looking and helping the new president to look at the future. You know, I want to ask you, like, <coughs> Anuruddha Ratnayaka, he lost his Olympic game, the match, uh, in 2008, I believe. And yes. Why, why do you think he lost that match? He lost, one thing was, he was the shortest guy in the weight. Yeah. He was the shortest guy. That's a huge disadvantage. The guy who fought the Latin American gold medalist from Brazil, was the tallest guy in the weight. So he's fighting a very tall guy and he's the shortest guy. Mm. The critical guy who won the gold medal was the Thai guy. Mm. Thai guy is technically far superior than anybody else. Mm. Somjit, he won the gold medal. We were getting ready to fight Somjit. We were never getting re ready to fight this uh, the Brazilian guy. guy. Yeah, Brazilian. Now, Brazilian guy, you know, when he fought, you know, he was, he was a smart boxer. He didn't allow Anuruddha to get close. Mm. Anuruddha's critical punch is the left cross, the right cross. The right cross. Right cross. Yeah. And when you hit that right cross, you know, I've seen him knocking that Tanzanian guy, yeah. Yeah. right? And he could knock out, knock off anybody, you know, in his way. He was very, very fast. strong. Yeah. Very strong, very fast. Mm. But to get a cross punch, you know, <coughs> it's very difficult. Close. Very close. And you have to connect the timing, mm. the power of the punch, and to hit it on the right spot. Mm. You know, whether the chin or the temple. Mm. You know, mm. to get all those variables right is very difficult. Yeah. And you can't only hit with that. You have to go with a double combination, double lift, and then hit him, mm. so that the guy is, uh, you know, not prepared for that punch. Anurudha couldn't get that punch. In the first round, it was 2-0. 2-0 up when the first round finished. Mm. First round, you must somehow win, you know, tactically. Mm. So then the pressure builds up. And then Anurudha was missing the punches. But the best ex experience that I could tell you on this 
he is the army boy uh, bandara mm. now bandara has this punch much stronger than even anuruddha mm. that punch any opponent opponent is down i have seen in in my era there is only one guy who could give that punch that was that just called there mm. who box for and the last asian goes go uh, games medalist yeah. who actually floored me also down okay. that punch you are down <laughs> that, that cross right and bandara was like that so bandara could win the fights here but i took him for this indoven cup because army was all the time fussing and i'm trying to train this guy saying you can't hit with that punch internationally and he fought a european guy in indoven in holland and lost badly mm. and i wanted to show the army coaches as well bandara couldn't hit a single punch for three rounds single punch trying to hit the cross Whoa. other guy was keeping him out moving typical european style of boxing mm. so i said didn't i tell you because with experience i've seen being in the corner and outside yeah. and but this was pre commonwealth games but we want to get it right and all that got it right to a certain level at the commonwealth games first fight against india the youth olympic gold medalist generally on a normal thing zero chance of ishan bandar winning that fight mm. this guy was cocky taller guy mm. you know thin very technical right no studying of i tell these guys don't put all your fights and all that stupid fights as well mm. on, YouTube, on youtube because everybody looks at it now and especially when they are fighting at that level our people are not interested in those <laughs> there are a few guys around they put it on youtube mm. anyway within the first 10 seconds he connected the punch guy was down unfortunately the italian referee gave a slow count mm. this is what happened slow count it's a big problem in boxing yeah but now we are cleaned up most of the things mm. slow count which he was got thrown out the following following oh, day okay. yeah they get thrown out oh, okay that's right right and i don't know whether it was the first round knockout or the second round floored he got up now next 20 seconds he hit the punch again the guy went down and actually that was the slow count mm. first count was right mm. slow count otherwise he would have been counted out anyway he got up mm. right another punch that would have been he would have got carried away because the guy was dizzy wobbly and all that but super indian coaching team mm. right i told this guy don't try to hit that punch in the second round the guy is waiting for it mm. right he is putting his hand up is moving even to love you to get close mm. he's setting him up yeah, first him. round clearly bandara won mm. second round was little close third round clearly beat and he lost unanimous or split you know Una- unanimous mm. unanimous uh, yeah but one round mm. bandara had won and it was actually not the first fight it was semi finals mm. yeah i, right? I want to talk i want to right. talk about anusha kodito as well in that fight with mary com yes uh, Anusha was very slow. She looked like she was on slow motion, and Mary Com looked like she was on fast forward. You know, she was just moving in quickly, fainting a lot. And I want to read this quote out yes. from Anusha Kodidoku that she recently gave to, I believe, it was Sunday Times or something yes. in 2020. Um, My dream was to take part in Olympics. We didn't have it to make it there. Boxing with what we have is difficult. For the sacrifices I made for boxing, the Commonwealth Games bronze is not good enough. she also said some other stuff but i just want to like now she, she was a good talent from sri lanka wouldn't you say you know i picked a talent because she was an athlete from humangalla mahavidyalaya mm. who came for athletic practice at streamline grounds mm. yeah and uh, i took her and actually i didn't want her to do boxing i got her to play rugby with that of mercantile servants rugby okay. uh, for the first time you know uh, village girls who had never seen a rugby brawl mm. i was getting them to play mercantile servants and we won the village girls beat john keels and metropolitan and the combined team we won that tournament anusha represented at the servants for sri lanka she she was the stand off mm. very good stand off mm. she was a natural athlete mm. i said look you got the natural athlete i was based there as the chief executive i said come for boxing practices i put her but initially you know her punches are not very straight she's tall she had all the abilities 
you know, even the Cuban, see, it's like this, you know, the cross, not very straight, mm. not perpendicular. Mm. So that was a drawback I always saw. But, you know, she was, she was a more technical, agile boxer. She was not a Mike Tyson. Mm. She was not somebody who could, you know, get beaten up badly mm. because she didn't have any competition here. Yeah, she nearly true. missed the Commonwealth Games because in her weight, everybody used to avoid. There was only one army girl called Chandrika. Mm. You know, he used to at least give her a close fight, you know, who was kind of wild and just hitting. But uh, even with Chandrika, because she was hitting wild and all that, Anusha struggled. Mm. But um, that's the thing, Mr. Gomez. Like you know, in Kerala, in a small village, at least 15 girls are pa taking part in competition. Yes. Yeah. You know, so it's, I've, I've seen it. It's a, you know, we put a lot of effort. What do you think uh, about her discipline? Discipline was, you know, I would say. Uh, People I speak to said that she's very disciplined. She's disciplined when it comes to training. I think the most disciplined guy I would say is uh, Anud Ratnayaka, mm, okay. right? Uh, Anusha was also disciplined. She she had the commitment mm. because I made sure that they are committed. The boxing team about five or six guys. We have, we have put in a lot of efforts and yeah. you know about their education, about their English, about their clothing, about their well-being because they were at MA's holdings, mm. and uh, so I think we did what was needed, all the facilities. But again, it's like basing them somewhere. You know, you need a lot of big money to do it. Mm. You know, our biggest problem is money because zero support from the government. Mm. All the ministers are very supportive, but no, no funding. So without funding, you can't do a sport. In 20 years, I've kind of funded the sport. Corporate <laughs> sponsorships, <laughs> own money. Yeah, you can't do like money. that. That's why you came in and it was very revolutionary what you did because you, no one in boxing knew on how to approach companies, find sponsorships and fund the sport. That's where, that's, you know, what you did that was like, you did it so spectacularly. That's why your name is synonymous with boxing, I would say, right? I mean, you see, why is that so? Number one, I was an educated guy. I was chief executive, you know, in a large, Sri Lanka's largest group of companies, mass holdings, mm. three billion dollar company. But mass used to give me only one million rupees, oh, okay. by the way, okay. right? One million rupees. Ashraf Oma used to give me four million dollars, four million rupees, mm. our competition. But the funding came from people. I used to go and lecture and collect money and put it in the kitty, right? I used to collect about another four, five million doing that. Used to collect. Mm. It is not the collection for people, for you to give me a check for boxing, my credibility must be 200 mm. percent. Today, would you want to give a check to any sports federation not knowing where it's going to be spent? You know, the only guy that I know who's money. spending money out of his own kitty, the only guy I know of, is Rohan De Silva from McLaren's. Mm. Rohan spends his own money, right? Mm. I mean, people used to think that I'm stupid or I would have got a punch during my boxing days at Royal College. Mm. That I'm stupid to spend my own money and… Either know. that or you have to be born into Saudi royalty. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> You're right. So, who's going to kind of spend money? Yeah. So, that so, and the other thing is people used to trust me and give me the money knowing that, you know, I, and, and the other most important thing, only the athlete gets a ticket. No, no coaches, nothing. No presidents, no officials. It, it's it's sad that you have to talk about these things. You know, people. Some for some people, it's like a trip, and these these things. It's a trip. That's that's very sad that we are at that level still. Because in other countries, they have uh, like they have gone to past that level. In other countries, coaches and you know promoters who look for these minute things in life. But majority of the countries, it is the same thing. Really? Would not 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 in Europe. Not much I'm in Asia. About top countries. Not the top countries. Top countries like. There are two two areas of way they are getting the funding. Mm. Number one, the National Olympic Committees of their countries, Spain, like England, Australia, mm. America, the National Olympic Committee funds the boxing. Mm. So they are they are more aligned to the National Olympic Committee. Our Sri Lanka National Olympic Committee is zero funding for boxing for the last twenty five years. Yeah, that was, uh, but uh, forget about all that. The funding generally is part of the, you know, the government and all that. The 
additional funding would come from the corporate sponsorships. Now, boxing is a poor man's sport. Professional boxing is not. Amateur boxing is a poor man's sport. So, obviously, for a poor man's sport, you know, the funding is more scarce. Now, I managed to get the funding because of my personal stature, not that I'm going on an ego trip. People, I was the president of SEMA, the chartered accounting body, right? My credibility was very high and I was holding a responsible job. So people would love me with that check. And I used to make sure that my financial auditor accounts, everything for the last 23 years was perfect and, and, and all that. So, you know, so it's interesting that you say all of this. You just talk, accountability yes. needs to be there. But one problem that many boxing promoters, I'm sure, must have had back in the day was combat sports is a tough man's sport. And at some point, there is fighting outside of the ring. Of course. Yes, so there is a, like boxing promoters in other countries have to deal with thugs. And these, these, I mean, this is a very sensitive no, it's, topic. So yeah, it, it's, it's, all, you, it's all sometimes managed by the mafia. Yeah. Okay. I mean, look at it's Pride. A, Pride was run by Yakuza. No, and, 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 and the other thing is, there's money in that. Yeah. You know, so betting. Just, yeah, imagine getting money from an established company as a sponsor when those types of things are happening. Yes. Have you ever had to... I don't know if you want no, to... No, ask me any question. You, you can tell me to shut up anytime, but yes. like, have you ever had... Have you ever had to, um, you know, deal with... No. I, uh, no. I was very tough. I deal, dealt with, I Minist think, about nine ministers. Yeah. Right? I dealt with nine ministers. There were times that I took my file and walked out and they used to scream and say, Dan, sit down. Mm. You know, because I was very tough. But they all supported me. Mm. You know, uh, I think other than one, one guy. No, but I'm everyone, asking, were there like moments where you were intimidated? Because that's what happens. No, they would, they would try to intimidate, but they knew I was actually bigger than the minister. Sorry to say that. I was not going to be... Uh, maximum I would do is they would they would uh, say you better step down from boxing or suspend the association. Mm. Fine. The moment if you suspend me like that, the IBA will blacklist Sri Lanka. That is what would happen. The moment you put an interim committee, they will suspend the country. Like what happened to Sri Lanka cricket? Yes. If you think about it. Yeah. So you can't you can't you can't mess around with them. And of course, you know you always get flack. You'll always get criticism. You know all this, but I was, I was. But I'd argue, Mr. Gomez, like that's the nature of the sport. Sport. Yes. You have to understand that. Yes. This is a tough man's yeah. game. And sure. especially boxing. Yeah. But you know, one thing I can tell you: these are some good experiences. Hmm. People have people now say, for example, the maid at home also have an opinion on Sri Lanka cricket. Okay. The driver, the everybody, everybody, everybody has an opinion. But most of the people don't have an opinion on boxing because they don't know the game intricately. Now, there was one good example. At the Commonwealth Games, right, I was screaming. You are not supposed to scream. I am the corner man with Harsha and Amila. Yeah. And uh, we scream in Sinhalese. Mm. <laughs> right? You, are, you can't say, tell any combinations. That is prohibited. You get thrown oh, out. Oh, really? See, I can't say double left and one, two, okay. three, four. But, but coaches do say one, two, three, four. Now something. you can. Okay. That time, 2018, no. Okay. You can't scream at the thing. You can't cheer at the thing. The people who sit there in the field of play, shush. Okay, till the boxer sits down. Now we scream. So the moment you scream, right, the technical delegate will come and warn you. You will get three warnings, then you have been thrown out. Then the boxer is left high and dry. <laughs> so now I was screaming, right? Uh, what we do is we scream in Sinhalese. <laughs> so nobody knows, no. Yeah. You know, even in Australia, none of the officials know Sinhalese, no. <laughs> then Anusha Gahapang, <laughs> 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 right? Now it is going and we can't say anything technical. Mm. So after the meet, uh, after the fight, the, you know, we had two other fights. Uh, no, this was the quarter final, I was screaming. And then we were warned twice mm. because there was this guy, Pat, the Canadian judge. You know, he's known to me very well. He was too embarrassed to throw me out. Okay. So the third time, second time I did it, 
I said ice cream, then Harsha screams, then Amila screams. So we, we take turns. <laughs> so either one of us will get thrown yeah, out. Yeah. Anyway, he came came and stood behind us so that we couldn't scream. Right? End of the story. Yeah. Next day, my good friend Shanakamara Singh, a very close friend of mine, mm -hmm. Tomian, writes and says, I think we need to be more technical than you know screaming and shouting Gahannamaranna. Right? Yeah. And some lady woman who doesn't know jack shit about boxing, yeah. right, saying, yes, you know, you have to do that and all that. And, you know, got into this social media conversation. Some woman. Some woman who okay. doesn't know anything. I yeah. don't know her even. Mm. And another person says, maybe, uh, then I said one comment. I know what I'm doing at the boxing ring in the field of play, right. I have yeah. so much of experience. I know what I'm saying and what I'm not saying. So then the same woman writes and says, I don't think Diane like criticism. And then, right, 100 people, you know, who are boxing fans and who is, you know, their boxer is fighting, mm. started hammering the, the two, after, three people okay. after that, mm. right, supporting me. What do you know about boxing? And, and all that now, huge, bloody, you know, thing. Now, I didn't want to explain. I didn't want to do anything. <laughs> okay. I said, we have two more fights tomorrow. Mm. Can you all please, please stop? all this bickering and shouting and giving your own comments, sit down and do your prayers for us to win. I know what I have to do, right? We can have this discussion after the after the fight's hour. Till then, can you all do your prayers for us? That's you sent the comment. You sent the comment, no more comments, that's mm. all. Mm. So, later on, I explain in a TV interview mm. why you have to shout, mm. why you have to do this. Mm. Because spectators think, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, you have to explain. Mm. So uh, yeah, those kind of disagreements always happen in in in, in cricket. It happens, yeah. but it's a gentleman's sport. But yes. in fighting, when it happens, it's explosive. You throw fighting on top of that. Yes. That that's like it's bound to happen. I want to ask you this modern. Now you talked about Aiba and all of that. This is very important that I want to ask you. You, I would consider you as the face of the old guard of boxing in Sri Lanka. I'm not saying you're old. Yeah. I'm saying, but I want to ask you, what do you think about? We see online. Uh, social media content creators coming in, YouTubers coming into the world of boxing. That has nothing to do with the Sri Lanka as yet, but yes. just, that's this trend of, uh, you know, we see Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson, yes. uh, you know, fights like that. But what do you think about it? You see, every sport is money. Okay. Even Ali's era and all that, right? The people who put Ali's front, the first promoters of Ali were yeah. all whites. And there's money. Without money, you can't take any sport forward. Number one. It's as funny you said they're all whites. <laughs> all whites. All I whites. mean, they were all whites. Yeah. Right. So that means money. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. all money. They are the ones who who funded Ali. You know, that time Cassius Clay. Yeah. So when you look at any sport, somebody has to fund, somebody has to support the sport. Now, what social media and all that does is create brands. Say the KFL. IBA, you know, WBC. Now, that is how that brand, you know, which will create the hype. Mm. You know, because without spectators, there is no sport. So, how do you do that? Yeah. You, now, need I been, yeah? you need eyeballs. Yes. And the higher the brand name is, people come to, you know, watch. Mm. Sometimes they come to, they hate the guy. Mm. Lot of whites came at that time in in the in the 60s to see Ali, see Ali lose, lose you know because he was a big yeah. loud mouth, mouth, mouth yeah. you know sometimes you know now I've been, been for the last IBA nights mm. you know we have fight nights now we put up a show the weighing in mm. the guy put you know their noses are touching each other you know the promoters yeah. are, you know as if they are going to hit each other the face off yeah. you know the face off it's, yeah, it's, you know it's it's to it's to hype the crowd up mm. And when they go the countries now, now the new new thing is all IBA fights. They put the name, you know. They can put the country stuff. Mm. So like when the continents fight, mm. you know, it's very marketable. But it doesn't necessarily mean they're the best boxers in the world. Might not be. There might be so many boxers that we have not identified. Yeah, I mean, look at Lomachenko uh, or Triple G. Guys like that, they fought like many bouts, but they were not known. Of course. So someone like it's it's anywhere in the world, you need to have a mentor, you need to have a promoter, you need to have money, 
and you have to have the credibility mm. to take anything forward. Whether it's a company, whether it's your brand, whether it's a sport, right, the credibility of the face. Mm. You know, that's very interesting. Let's get to the last part of this interview. Mr. Gomez, uh, you know, I spoke to you right after uh, Lanka Fight League to get a quote from you for an interview that I did for the morning. And you straight up said, this is the first time I've ever heard a promoter say this. Yeah, the fights were shit. <laughs> That's basically what you said. Not of word course. to word. Not, yeah. And you said the organizers did a good job, but the fights were not up to expected yes. standards. And, you know, I saw some fights and I was commentating that night yeah. with a friend of mine. Um, and, I mean, as commentators, we like to see the best in all fights. Yes. To describe it at that moment. But yeah, I understand why you said some fights were not up to the standard, especially there was, I don't want to, yeah, let's not talk about per, per yeah. fight, it, it might yes. discourage the fighters. But I want to ask you, what do you think about Lakshan and Daniel's fight? Do you remember? Daniel was the most popular boxer and Lakshan beat him. Um, I think, I think for me, uh, I didn't actually count the punches, but I mm. felt uh, Lakshan would have won that fight, number one. Yeah. Uh, he's talented, but he has to be put under some good training, mm. you know, because his grandfather is the legendary uh, Olympic boxer, I think, Leslie Handunge. Really? That's what I heard. Okay. Right? So, Leslie Handunge, you know, uh, was a unique technical fighter, mm. right? And, and a brilliant guy, old Trinitian, mm. and a boxer Peradini University as well. Different era, yeah. different yeah. classy yeah. guys. And uh, so, this guy's got the talent. I'll put my bets on it. Mm. But he has to be disciplined, he has to be, you know, trained mm. and he's in the right weights. You see, the other problem that Sri Lanka has, we can fight only in three weights. People can say all kinds of things mm. and they criticize me for that. Genetically, yeah. we can fight light fly, fly and feather. Smaller weight categories. Smaller weight categories. Mm. Sri Lanka always have won all the medals internationally, Commonwealth Games, Asian Games, all the international fights in these three ways. Other than soft games where you get a, you know, yeah. five card. Never a heavyweight or a light heavyweight cruiser. We don't have the DNA. You have a smaller if you think about it. We are rice eaters. Right? The rice eaters can't be world champs. <laughs> Simply as that. Nobody tells that. Nobody tells that. I mean, Russian would just and, straight and up eat a bunch of Say, steak. for example, the Uzbek guy, they eat horses. <laughs> horse meat. <laughs> High protein. Right? Yeah. When those guys, I, I, can, I can remember, I went for Olympic trial with uh, Manjuwan Niyarachi and somebody else, I think Kamal Samir or something. Mm. Final weight in Uzbekistan or Kazakhstan. Mm. You know, minus 40. Mm. You know, they couldn't, our guys to get, you know, warm up, it took about 45 minutes. Mm. Those guys are walking bare body. You know, <laughs> <laughs> when I went out, my, my moustache was all white with little, you know, snow. So, what are we talking oh, about? We have to face the real. It's like, yeah. if you ask me, can Sri Lanka play a World Cup final? Okay. Can Sri Lanka play... Which sport? In football. In football. Right. Can Sri Lanka play <laughs> Manchester United? Can Sri Lanka <laughs> play any football club? Forget about in Europe. Even in Africa? No. <laughs> yeah. Or can we play Raga yeah. at a World Cup? But no. I'm not a believer of this genetics bullshit. But I do say nutrition matters. You said rice. You are absolutely right. Now let's look at the Singaporean boy who, who won the Olympic gold medal beating Phelps. Okay. Right? When this, he was a kid, Phelps had already won eight or nine gold medals. Hmm. His icon, like your my icon was Muhammad Ali, hmm. right? His icon was Michael, Michael Phelps. Phelps. What did they do? Singapore sent him to US. He was in the in in US, trained all that with the right coaches, right facilities. He was not a tall guy. I mean, he was not as tall as Michael Phelps. Hmm. But he beat Michael Phelps at the Olympic make for the gold. That's the only Singaporean guy to have a gold, Olympic gold. What do you think they did right? 
right nutrition, right training, right mentality and putting all that. The boy himself was fairly wealthy. The parents are totally supportive. Mm. Right facilities. But the sports that we can easily win is pistol shooting. <laughs> pistol shooting. Mm -hmm. If I were the were, were the, the the country, because that sport is a technical sport. We can win on your technical sports. <laughs> Maybe Contact sports, not so much. <laughs> not so much. Yeah. That's a reality. I want to talk to you about something else also. Steroids. Yes. Why do fighters take them? I mean, just it's so bad for if a Sri Lankan fighter takes it, it's just I, I think it's disgraceful, to be honest. Why do you think fighters take it? And what's your personal have you do you have do you what are your personal experiences with steroids? I had a personal experience with uh, the Manjuanyarats incident. Okay. But Say for example, Manju, was the, Manju had already won the Commonwealth uh, silver medal in the championships. Mm. Six months away, he goes to this quack, which we didn't know, which I was not aware of it even. I was not the president at that time. And uh, two guys go because he had a hand injury. Mm. And this guy treats all the athletes, not only, not only the boxing athletes, all the athletes in Kurnagala and gives him uh, something called decadurabolin, which is given for cancer. Now, decadurabolin does not need, you don't need that for boxing. Mm. So, a stupid one of the officials, mm. actually one of somebody in the administration, mm. and Manju being stupid, gets a jab. And he worships the doctor also and comes back and to see he's not a MBBS, he's not a homeopathy, he's a quack. And we tried to get him nailed, but that time he, he jumped the ship. Okay. But anyway, today, if you take steroids and get caught, it's a jail sentence. Mm. Uh, the, the, the coach is banned for life. We have taken some tough, the government, the ministry, and um, led by Professor Arjuna, mm. Professor Sivali, mm. all these good guys. Mm. You know, very tough action, which I really appreciate. Now. That they are, you, whatever, they are doing God's work because in fighting, one fighter cannot be juiced up because it's not fair. It's the not fair and, and it can be very risky. Yeah. But it happens. Yeah. People take the risk. It's like taking drugs. People take the risk. Hmm. If you get caught, you get death caught. sentence. Yeah. But still people carry it. So, people are stupid. Hmm. Now, my situation is you have to give them from school level the education part. The problem is they don't understand. You see, when people people take steroids or something today i mean 2010 i was not aware of it but today i'm a much more older man matured man experienced guy right i can see whether you're taking steroid or not you okay. are yeah a woman or a man taking steroids you can see it mm. you know what they do is they take the steroid what, what, what physical physical quality? attributes okay what, what, what like are they? woman who looks like a man Right, and uh, you know, thinning hair of any men, okay. right? Thinning hair. Thinning hair, obviously, you're on to steroids. Mm. If you see any 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 guy with, you know, less hair, right, you know they're on to steroids. Now, how do, how they don't, now there's a, there are two ways of doing it, mm. you see, which I didn't know. People take steroids yeah. and they duck and dive all these tests. If you are a okay. medalist, you are definitely being tested, no, 100%, yeah, yeah. no chance. Yeah. Even if you have taken cold, anything for the cold, you will get caught. Yeah. Even take you take a asthma puff, mm. you get caught, you have to declare. Now, people who take, say, one year before thing and wean it out. <laughs> so, by the time you ah. come to a competitive level, right, you are, you are, because you can't retain it, it goes off. Mm. But what happens is now, IOC, WADA, all these things, places, Check these guys out of competition. And that is why some of the guys who miss up out of competition, why do they miss out of competition? Because they are on steroids. They got busted. They'll get busted. Then they'll get thrown out. Mm. And the, the sad part of it, some of them would take something, you know, without knowing that it's banned. Now, there are so many yeah. drugs. Because yeah. the biggest problem is here, our drugs will not give everything, you know, medicine. Mm. They are brought from... Bangladesh to various places. The, the easiest thing is to give something like pregnancy alone. Mm. The recovery is very fast. Yeah, yeah. 
but now the vada body dr sivali professor arjuna they teach they do even iba we have lot of seminars we have qualified lot of doctors mm. now our doctor dr arugoda he is also in the iba medical commission mm. and the asian commission mm. so dr arugoda would come and teach now there are other doctors i can't put a doctor at the boxing ring yeah. who's a gynecologist <laughs> not that theoretical he can wait yeah. but there is no necessary you have to put actual neurosurgeon mm. you have to put sports medicine doctors mm. who understands and especially something like boxing a neck injury mm. you know a brain injury you know otherwise the doctor can the boy boy can die yeah but people you know i don't know people tend to take shortcuts that's yeah you they can't cut corners if sri lankan boxers are true to get to the next level and i just want to bring an end to this discussion but by asking now you are uh, obviously your topic is boxing but what do you where do you stand on other combat sports like mixed martial arts kickboxing muay thai wrestling jiu jitsu i think there yeah, any sport is a great sport and i i would say like kickboxing and all that might be tougher than even actual olympic boxing hmm. now there is a safety factor see in in all these things mm -hmm. right cage boxing you see people don't understand the risk you know the risk you understand now at 26 years and the risk that i understand in 66 years are like you know black and white okay because i have seen it all mm -hmm. say you do it today say martial arts you don't know your neck injuries the neck injuries the knee injuries when it to doctor boxing itself is bad enough yeah you know all safety conditions right you know boxing is not the the the, the risky sport risky sport I is number 1 is what? if you to say is motor racing okay. right so boxing is number 13 combat sports boxing is the dangerous i would say box no kfl like you know muay thai and all that are much more dangerous you would say that of course okay i mean because boxing is controlled well okay it's an older sport it's been developed over 100 years yeah, so there's been the biggest combat sport yeah biggest combat sport and it's lot of checks and balances especially now other you get thrown out and all that you know one single you know it happens hmm. now even in iba one of the meets one of the uh turkish or somebody a boy from jordan died there he was inquiry and all that mm. you know so doctors can make mistakes mm. but if it comes to like free for all fighting like you yeah. know kicking and mm. you know okay. throwing and all that mm. but some of these fights are all kind of made up things for social media like the wwf yeah. <laughs> if you throw people <laughs> like that and jump on <laughs> them they will die that's it, true i mean that's you know true. it's it's a different sport yeah. but people love it mm. people anyway like combat sports yeah meet in mixed martial arts kickboxing boxing anything, whatever anything anything you know the only time i have seen the stadium packed 6000 6000 spectators hmm. is only boxing you, and, you so you're not a fan of mixed martial arts i love to watch okay. but if you if you are my son and you want to take part i would discourage really yeah i would discourage the risk is very high Well, if you look at the elite level of the UFC, because I, it's big money. Yeah, but it's the safety factor is very much. It's very well uh, governed, I would say. Well Even in one championship, you know. It's yeah, a, but it's not at the big boxing level of safety. I would say I've seen. I I mm. I love it. Mm. I mean, uh, I was with uh, uh, a few months back with Connor, right? You McGregor. know, um, uh, yeah, McGregor. McGregor. What do you mean you Sorry. were with him? <laughs> I was at he was at the boxing meet. I took a picture. He's in my Instagram and all. Great guy. I had a glass of champagne with the guy. You're McGregor. Kidding. Yeah, I mean, do you people, have a picture? Yeah, I got a picture. I'll show it to you. Oh, I got right? send it to me. You know, I just put it up here <laughs> <laughs> with McGregor. I'm a, I'm a great fan of McGregor, mm. right? So, mm. but uh, I would would you if I had a son and if my son wants to go mix martial arts. i would discourage okay and this is what we kind of i on a disagreement here like some people say in boxing <coughs> the chances of you getting concussions is way higher than in mixed martial arts because in mixed martial arts you get cut because of the smaller glove 
and the level obviously there is damage in both sports but you know if you if you get cut or anything the dam the referee stops the fight right if you get a tko victory but in boxing you, the constant blows that you get to the head at the end of the day could lead to some you know long term effects wouldn't you say i would i would i would i won't give an expert opinion on that yeah. but that can be true mm. and um, at amateur level it's lesser yeah. but at a professional level like ali's level of fighting 45 minutes yeah. 15 rounds for over a period of you know 15 years or tyson you know i'm quite surprised that you know they survived yeah. without any serious brain injury yeah but i mean because every blow that you hit you know the brain jerks yeah you know so obviously some kind of cells also would die yeah. so over a long period of time yeah. there's huge risk yeah. any sport but you know, you know regardless of all of that mr gomez i think you know, even in mixed martial arts in boxing boxing is just beautiful and it's the in my opinion it's the best striking art i would say. i don't know this is very controversial i couldn't say that you know but but it's it's a thing of beauty looking technically at it, it's technically beautiful it's i mean very if you beautiful. see the people like yeah the adjustments and they make and then then you know faints it's just very much beautiful to see no i'll just tell you one example yeah why are cubans so good in boxing because they dance oh they mean salsa. they do salsa so from young days they do salsa so what Kazakhstan and Uzbek guys did Cuba because they were had close tight with the Soviet Union in yeah. the 60s yeah. right they brought the Soviet uh, coaching to Cuba right with a natural flair of salsa dancing and really? with the Russian techniques of fighting they became they mastered that and they blended in and they made their yes. own style today the russian uzbeks and the kazakhs try to improvise on that mm. the footwork and all that where do you think mexican boxing stand in all of this brutal very brutal very brutal yeah. tough and you know boxing comes from very underprivileged guys mm. tough environments mexico is a tough environment ireland is a tough environment yeah. they do street fighting <laughs> Every you know, day. you you fight with them. I I, I had Ratnayak who won that fight in the Commonwealth Championships, two thousand and three. Mm. He was fighting a Northern Irish guy, two thousand and three. The height of all these issues, mm. right? And I told Ratnayak he was very good in close because his cross punches are good. He connects his uppercuts. Yeah. You know, if anybody outboxes him, he loses the fight. Mm. I told Sam, these are Irish boys. Irish boys are very different. they fight every day even on the street yeah. they are tough fellows yeah. don't get close he went toe to toe both hit some good punches <laughs> okay irish guy won the fight but i felt you know under the one that fight really? you know mm. because yeah. the problem with other sri lankan boxing is they miss punches too much they are not precise precise and that is why that bruce lee's famous comment i scared the i am scared of the guy who does one punch 1000 times right rather than the guy who has 1000 punches it's like that story you know <laughs> <laughs> i just want to end this interview by asking you if you had to describe the sweet science of boxing to a high level coach to a commoner who doesn't know much boxing how would you do it in like 2 minutes i would say learn the fundamentals footwork straight punches how would you describe the sweet science of boxing it's a footwork it's like the salsa you know yeah it's like salsa it's not like trying to knock a guy out down or something in the 60s it was like that mm. you know it's a blood sport mm. today was a blood sport but it's a science and you can learn the science chess yeah mr gomez thank you so much for okay thank Talk you very me. much <laughs>